everybody and welcome back to the channel. We are continuing our grind at, where is it? Tokyo 600. Well, how can I not remember? Here we are today's, today's car of choice. It is the Lamborghini Merchilago. It is probably one of the most iconic cars I can remember from, from my early days. I say early days, I was going to say childhood, but this car isn't that old to be honest. It's uh, one of the most defined Lamborghini cars of my growing up. It was the one that I would choose to want to own today. If I was to have the choice, this would be the one. It's fat, it's sat on, it's, it's wide, it's got presence, it is a beautiful car. But what's it like in the game? Well, we're going to go and find out. Let's take a look at the setup. Now, this is tuned for 600 pp for the Tokyo race. We're in at 599.85. It's got 576 brake horsepower. Fully customizable suspension, everything is default, nothing changed. Fully customizable diff with the torque centering vector center differential, which I'm going to change to 50 50. We can change that later on if we find the tire wear a bit excessive. Downforce is tuned to my liking. Uh, at the front, it's 118 on the rear, 280. Fully customizable ECU reduced to 80. Nothing else changed there on the ballast or the performance. You could probably add weight if you want to and take the power up a little bit. I don't think there's anything you need to. Transmission, fully customizable manual purely because it reduces PP. Top speed is set to 350 on the gearbox. We have air cleaner, silencer, exhaust manifold and the brake system all on racing. Brake controller, which we're going to push forward to minus three. We have the racing carbon, the, the racing clutch and flywheel. And there's also the prop shaft there, which is a level 50 item, but it doesn't change PP, so I don't really think you need it. So if you're not level 50, don't worry about it without it we have the increased body rigidity there just added to it let's go and take a look in the gt shop so the wheels are standard we've just set them to wide which you can do custom parts on the front we have type a on the rear 10,000 points for getting going to be the custom wind set high type 20 on the rear as you all know that's the that's the go-to set for me because it reduces pp and it's the most available downforce and then you can change the downforce depending on how much PP you want to add. In terms of raising items, there's nothing there to give it. And again, on the other, anything we'd really want to do is change the front grille. Feel free to choose what you like as and when you like. Owned wheels, as you can see here, we will just be applying the offset to wide. Oops. Offset to wide, and you can see that happen. There's not a massive amount that happens. It just pushes the wheel out. And the PP is at 599.85. For those people that know the race, this is 12 laps. Settings will be assists, traction control one, weak ABS. Probably need to go to default really because it's not a race car. And countless steer assistance is on strong. Assists, we've just done its controller settings. I'm on a Fanatic G DD Plus on a GT Extreme wheel. We've got force feedback max torque 7, force feedback sensitivity 10. So, for most people that know, this is a car of tuned street cars. Uh, probably bordering just on the exotics with some of the classics, but nothing in the supercar. And the Merchilago really does fit in the supercar sort of fit. It's one of the early days of what would be known as supercars. So, let's see how it performs. We haven't overly tuned it. So... As it comes down to what it's capable of. We've got everything set to where it needs to be. The key thing for us is to be able to do six laps. If we can get to six laps, we're pretty much set on where we need to be. Just going to squeeze our way up here down the outside. Try and make our way down. You can see the track is quite wet. Mr. Gallo leads the pack with Fraga in second and his Al first. And we're going to try and make our way up somewhere around Blaz and we're going to break on the 200 give it everything we take a touch from the rear we don't mind that occasionally trying to preserve that clean race bonus as early as we can and as long as we can Mr. Beauvoir looks like he's up for the fight today and I think that's where our battle's going to be looking at how fast we are if we can just hold this car in fourth gear through here. Might be better being fifth. We might save a bit of fuel. Because I think fuel 
is going to be quite close and critical. Mr. Bouvier held his line pretty well there. He wasn't going to be bullied off it. Let's see what happens here. Yes, we managed to squeeze a nose in front. Keep the power in. The car's got plenty of grip. We haven't overly forced this car onto poor tyres. Sports hard to pretty reasonable here. The car has got plenty of power and the four-wheel drive really does help it. I'm hoping to bring you a series of Lamborghini videos here for all the cars. I was kind of suggested that one of the Lamborghinis has an engine swap and I haven't been able to find it as yet. So we're just going to progress our way through these cars and see which one of these beauties, see if all these beauties can can, uh, can do the thing. Actually, uh, working with Mr. Ridley at the moment on a tune for a BMW M3, which we've got tuned perfectly for power. But at this moment, I can't make it turn or, or break. So we're just going to have a little play with that. And the M3 is the last one that came to the day game. So we're chasing Blazan, end of the first lap at 2.23, some three seconds quicker than normal street carts. 5.3 laps of fuel remaining so it looks like we're good tyres look good for the whole race if we can get away with using these tyres and not having to change them that's going to be 4 seconds saved in the pit lane got past Blazan into 6th place we need to uh, face down Suswillow and Cookerman what I haven't really made any notice of yet is just how quick this car is in a straight line feels a little bit slow through the acceleration phase but turning wise it's beautiful lots of grip we should be able to slide this car effectively get it through the corners and deliver us to the best bits of the circuit quite nicely that's Mr. Hizal just Dispatched and Mr. Fraga just wants to uh, own the road a little bit, which is not a problem. We will uh, dispatch him thoroughly. We'll take the inside line and we switch a on him. No, we're just going to give him a nudge. Don't take any damage though, which is cool. We're going to just brush those. Red wobble knobs, brake on the 175, and we take an impact from Fraga. He um, he was overcommitted there. He's given us rear damage, and that's probably a clean race bonus up the Swanee. But let's um, let's show Mr. Fraga a clean pair of heels, and showing the damage he's done to our beautiful Mercia Lago. There you go, sir. Goodbye, adios. Chasing Cookabud and Suswillow, which are the two main contenders for this race. 4.3 on the fuel, we're good. We're going to have to stop on lap 6. Doesn't look like we're going to have to take tyres, which is tremendous. This race dries out, so the grip gets better, but the tyre wear becomes more aggressive. Anybody wants to try and understand the difference between the braking systems ABS weak and ABS default? This was a question on last night's live stream. What is the difference and how do you make it work? Well, primarily from the research and testing and trialing we've done, race cars are better with ABS weak. Bumpy tracks are better with ABS default. So if you've got a race car on a bumpy track, primarily you're going to want to use ABS default. It's going to reduce the chatter you get with uh, pressing the brake on a bumpy surface and the ABS will try and lengthen your braking to try and stop the slide and the lockup. ABS weak is going to be a lot less ABS force which is great on a smooth surface because you're going to choose to brake at your own power 
but on this circuit it's really quite smooth but we are not in a race car and we would always default to ABS default because it's not a race car just going to keep ourselves on the inside of Mr. Cookabun and just show him that we have the apex priority he's going to get back on the gas though and attempt to cut us up the inside but it's not going to have that we're going to chase so we low down and we're only 7.5 seconds back our last lap was a 2.10.9 so it's, it's a very capable car it's going to be certainly capable of winning this race 2.10.5 so getting better I think maybe with comfort softs we would be struggling now to uh, to keep this pace the tyres won't be lasting but uh, I don't think we can manage an increase in tyre capability we break just a little bit late there we need to be breaking on the 200 so there's a little bit of panic involved the ABS cut in and cut out as we went across the white line so that wasn't brilliant. It's the problem with the ABS is if you're braking across the hatching, you're going to have reduced grip because there's less grip on the painted surface. I believe the game represents that, so try and stick to the tarmac stuff if you're going to panic brake. We're over into the hatched area there, but shouldn't be a problem. We're now with Mr. Suswillow. He's going to leave us a gap. We're going to go into second place now and chase down Mr. Gallo. This car is definitely capable. The only thing it does need is it needs that little bit extra braking distance. The 50-50 torque split is perfect for tyre wear. If you want to play with that torque split and give yourself a little bit more rear power so you can enjoy the drifty stuff coming out the corner, do so. We don't have the ability to add 555 here with a magic diff setting because it's four wheel drive however it really doesn't need it the car is really comfortable and confident and stable we're on to the lap that Mr Gallo will choose to pit he's five and a half seconds ahead Mr Suswillow who is the main threat in the race is just 0.6 of a second back let's break on the 200 expect Suswillow to catch us up a little bit under brakes much better when you break on the 200 much better I believe we should be ringing a, uh, a league race to this circuit streetcar kind of road car sort of sort of basis we have the appropriate type of cars this might be the perfect venue for a league race So charging down to the end of lap 5 we are catching Mr Gallo he is only 3 seconds ahead breaking on the 200 we could probably look to break on the 175 there now Mr Gallo is going to the pits this time round it looks like we're on capability of, a, of the purple it looks like there's a chance here we could do a 2096 which would be tremendous as Mr. Gallo shoots to the pit there. 
Let's see what we can do. 2091. That gives us the fastest lap of the race. This is eminently capable car. We've done a fair few miles in this car. We bought it second hand. It's just about to turn 16,000 miles. And it might do that before the end of the race. So if we can uh, watch it do that, we might be able to celebrate the 16,000. Which would be tremendous. Who else does that in their private car? When you hit those milestone 10,000s or 100,000s. I've not... Uh, I've not hit a hundred thousand in many of my cars. Um, and the Mini, I bought at thirty-four thousand, and it's approaching sixty thousand now. It's a um, good little car for what it is. I don't know if this is going to make it. Probably going to end up shy of the uh, 16,000 because not an overly long circuit, is it? Eight seconds ahead of Mr. Suswillow, and we're heading in because we don't have that extra lap of fuel. Engine note on this car is beautiful. Gear changes like sound sublime and really clinical. Here we go then, heading into the pits. I'm expecting Suswillow, Gazel, sorry, Suswillow, Cookaban, Hizal, Praga, all to go hooning past. And we will probably drop into like 7th or 8th place. We're not changing tyres. We're going to take the fuel. We're going to save 4 seconds. Suswillow's come in, Cookaban's carried on, Hizal's carried on. Who else is coming in? Need 6.2 laps of fuel. Fraga coming in. Fraga goes past. 6.3 it looks like we took. Now we've just got to drive for the front. Gallo is behind us, five seconds back. And he's catching. is not there's a second behind here it comes no headlights on or does he going to break on the 175 look how fast he comes in so if we're able to we're going to look at the Kuntash to see if the Kuntash will come at 600 pp then we want to have a look at of course the uh, the Gallardo see if that'll come then the Diablo now we know the Diablo will work here at 600 pp my very first race the very first video the Tokyo 600 I posted the Diablo so it'd be great to uh, Return to the Diablo at update 1.49. That was a heavy slam. That wasn't good. I was thinking about the Diablo at the time. We'll see if we can uh, get the Diablo back here with a little twist to see if we can make it even faster. See if we can get it to compete. I don't think we're going to be doing a custom race at the end of this series to see which one's the fastest I think we're all going to lose to the Escudo I don't think there's any any car that we're going to be able to put up against the Escudo unless we bring that Pikes Peak monster the, uh, the Peugeot RCZ so Kukabun and Hizal go to the pits is Fraga carrying on Fraga's gone in what about Blazan? Blazan's gone in so we're chasing Gallo Gallo is 2.7 seconds in the lead. 
Ukabrun, Yamanaka, all appearing from the pits. 188, 190. Is it going to be 195 on the 200? 196. We're not quite a 200 mile an hour car here, but certainly capable. Really starting to enjoy this Tokyo race. I know I have done for a long time. And I'm enjoying it for other reasons now. We're, we're finding more cars. With the, with the new grip that comes under update 1.49, 1.50. We're finding more cars we can bring into the fold. And I'm really starting to look at cars that you wouldn't really think about bringing here. So expect to hope to see some different types of cars. In the near future. Tokyo is one of the places where you can genuinely and seriously expect to earn some decent credits and enjoy the race. Not saying that you don't enjoy the race at other tracks, it's just Tokyo is probably the first grind that people come across because Le Mans and uh, Sardinia and Spa all come at later levels in the cafe menu. 200 with Mr. Gallo now to apply pressure to him as he's going to start to look to the pits again ooh we got wild there didn't we oh my opa no damage though that just slowed us down I'm expecting him to go one more lap and then it's all about us charging to the end of the race. Fastest lap is now Mr. Gallo at 207.733. I think he's taken that away from us. I genuinely don't think we're going to be in the world of being able to beat that time. That's rapido quick. Maybe Cookerbun has the uh, ability to, to take that away from Mr. Gallo. But I'm already going to concede that at this point. Half a second up though on the purple time at sector one. Let's see if we can actually challenge that. A little bit of a short shifty there. The car steady into the corner. Steady and stable. Little point three up. Sliding in there. Point where we can pass him. We don't want to clip any walls through here. Is that a message on PS? Catch that at the end of the race. So a second ahead of Gallo, he's going to the pits behind us now, I believe. And we are, ooh, failed to break. Go across the white line, whatever you do. We break at the 200. A little bit of panic set in there. As much panic set in as I got to the end of last night's league race. Oh my. And that was a 2.10.4 the last lap. He sort of let the time slip away at the end there with that missed hairpin. 2090, so we've put a faster lap in than our personal best. Gallo has gone to the pit. Cookerman is 8.4 seconds back. We're now going to see if we can. We're never going to get 1.47 quick. 1.4 seconds quicker. But we're going to see if we can go break another two. We're still up on. The purple time. Yamanaka yeah, seems to have switched to the same sort of strategy as Gallo. Gallo used to be up there on his own. On his own sort of two-stop strategy, which isn't going to work. 
Well, it might do if you want third place. Getting fourth gear early, see if we can bounce off the wall. Third gear it is. Charging down 11 seconds ahead of Cookerman. I didn't check the time and gates to see where we were. We've got one more. 200. See how far we are away from possible purple. The rear tyres are probably at their optimal now. Oh, we're just a tenth shy. This is going to be a 2-0... It's either going to be a 209.10. It might be a 209.10, yes. Two laps remaining. 209.4. Uh, we're miles away from the purple. How do we get that purple then? We're good at the end of here on speed. 12 seconds ahead of Cookman. Looks like that pursuit has given up. Dived in with a lot of slide there. Now we saw a purple by 0.364. The last couple of times we get to this timing gate. We're half a second down, obviously due to grip on tyres. Third gear is so much better through there, but the tyre wear across the range is really good. You don't really need to make many more adjustments to make the grip. Oh, we hit the wall so hard. Point six six down. We're only trying to battle with our own sort of competitive spirit at this point. Fifteen seconds ahead of Cookerbun. Trying to see if Cookerbun's under threat from anybody behind him. One thing we haven't managed to do much in this series of races. is um, overtake any lap cars. We've not really been getting to the back markers. We haven't really used any cars that have got that massive, massive capability. So let's see what we can do. Can we catch Mr. Gentry on this lap? 2.10.2. Fastest lap is still pretty decent at 2.09. Here we go then, on the 2-0, still three, two thirds of a second up on the purple, so we're faster down the straight than Mr. Gallo was. If we've dropped away and lost half a second this time round. No, we're still up. We're up this time.
break another 200. Again, I've got to look at the timing gates. It's going to run wide a little bit here. But as we go on to the final lap, we're getting blue flags. There's Mr. Gentry, so this is the last lap. I mean, as we run to the last corner, this is the last lap. We're not quite going to catch Mr. Gentry. But we're 18 seconds ahead of Cookerman, who leads out Gallo, Sosuilo in fourth, Braga fifth, Izal in sixth, Blazan seventh, and Beauvoir eighth. As the Murcielago demonstrates its capability. Very, very capable car, and one that you should have in your garage. As an available 600pp racer, it is pretty decent. So 26 minutes 45, it's the fastest of the most recent cars, very much definitely alongside the um, F403, F430, sorry, F430 Scuderia, very much definitely up in that sort of window. Cookerbun, 18 seconds behind, and Mr. Gentry, 2 minutes 13, so fastest lap goes to Mr. Gallo, only thing that uh, the Murchilago couldn't win, no clean bone race bonus at this time. Probably because of that rear end impact we got. And there we have it, 550,000 credits. We're getting back to that 75 million. We keep spending money on cars and upgrades. But there you have it, folks. Another one to add to your arsenal. We'll see you on the next one. All the best. Take care.